hi guys welcome and welcome back to my channel in today's video i'm going to be showing you how to make this pajama shorts that i'm wearing or loungewear and if that's something that you would like to see definitely keep watching it promises to be another fun and detailed tutorial and i particularly like the shorts because they're very versatile they can be used as loungewear they can be used as sleepwear they can be made out of silk or cotton so guys if you haven't subscribed don't forget to subscribe and enjoy the video thank you to make your pajama shorts you need the following items you need your elastic and i've got this one inch wide elastic that i like however if you don't have the one inch wide elastic the half inch wide one works as well i personally prefer the one inch wide because of the look when you're done you'd also need some pins you need your tailor's chalk or fabric marker you need your fabric scissors you need your pencil and eraser however for the purpose of this video i'll be using a sharpie to draft my pattern you need your measuring tape. You need your ruler. However, if you have your pattern master but you don't have a ruler, that is absolutely fine. And you guys know that the pattern master is my favorite tool when I'm drafting patterns. I like it because it's so useful and multifunctional. If you would like to shop the pattern master, check out the links that I have in the description bar. You'd also need some fabric. So I've got this silk fabric that I like and that's what I'm going to be using. And of course, lastly, you need some pattern paper or just regular white paper like what I have here. Start off by drawing a center line vertically on the pattern paper. For me, what I had to do was just fold my paper into two and then I just had the crease that was formed and traced out the crease to draw my center line. After drawing the center line, go ahead and draw the top line. The top line is a horizontal line and it's only about two and a half centimeters wide. Starting at the point where the top line meets the center line, mark out the waist to hip measurement. So basically that's the vertical measurement from your waist to where your hip is. You also want to mark out the crotch depth measurement as well as the desired short length measurements. So the waist to hip measurement again is the vertical measurement from your waist point to the hip. So depending on where you want your shorts to sit, whether high waist or low waist, you want to take the vertical measurement from that point to the hip. You want to take the crotch depth measurement or the seat measurement as well as the desired short length measurements you want to mark these measurements vertically and then you want to square out these points as shown label this part of the pattern as front the first line will be labeled as the hip line while the second line will be labeled as the crotch depth line and the last line will be labeled as the short length line. You also want to label the top line as the waist. On the hip line, the crotch line and the waist line, mark the front hip measurements plus half inch ease and then connect all these points with the vertical line as shown. Extend the front crotch line. You want to extend the front crotch line by a quarter of the front hip measurements. So for instance, if your front hip measurement is 10 inches, you want to extend the crotch line by a quarter of that, which is 2.5 inches. After marking the crotch extension, go ahead and find angle 45 and then draw a line as shown. On that line, mark one and a half inches and then draw in the front crotch to draw in the front crotch you can make use of any curved item however i'm using my pattern master to draw the front crotch measure the value you have on the crotch line starting from the center line all the way to the crotch extension and then mark out the same value on the short length line Connect the points with a vertical line as shown, meaning that you have the same value on the crotch line as well as the same value on the short length line. Mm -hmm. 
We are now done with the front pattern and it's now time to move on to the back pattern. To draft the back pattern, start off by squaring out the points on the center line. So you want to square out the hip line, you want to square out the crotch depth line and you want to square out the short length line. After squaring out all these lines, go ahead and label appropriately and you also want to label this part of the pattern as the back. On the waist, hip and crotch lines, mark the back hip measurement plus half an inch for ease and then connect all these points with a vertical line as shown. Extend the crotch line outwards by half the back hip measurement. After extending the crotch line, mark angle 45 and then draw a line at angle 45. On that line, mark 2 inches as shown. Afterwards, go ahead and draw the back crotch, making sure to touch all the points as shown. Depending on your preference, Draw a straight line or a slant line to connect the crotch end to the short length as shown. I went with a slant line, however, it is more advisable to draw a straight line. At the center back, which is the crotch line at the back, raise the waist by half an inch and then connect this point back to the center line point with a slant line as shown. Alright guys, so at this point, the pattern is now done and ready to be used. Go ahead and cut out your pattern pieces, making sure to remember that no allowances have been added to this pattern. I mean no sewing allowances. To cut out the fabric, fold the fabric into two and then pin the front piece to it. After pinning the piece to the fabric, go ahead and mark out the sewing allowance of half an inch at the side, half an inch at the crotch, 2 inches at the top and then 1 inch at the hem. Cut out the pieces after marking out the allowances. The whole point of leaving 2 inches at the top is so that you can make the elastic casing when you are done with your shorts. However, I initially left about 3 inches at the top of mine and I found out that it was too much so I went ahead to trim it which is what I am doing at this point. You only need about 2 inches to even fit in an elastic that is about 1 inch wide. Pin the back pattern piece onto the folded fabric and then mark out the sewing allowance of half an inch at the side, half an inch at the crotch area, 2 inches at the top and then 1 inch at the hem. Mm -hmm. 
After marking out the allowances, go ahead and cut out the back piece as shown. After cutting out the fabric, unpin the pattern from the fabric and then go ahead and pin the crotch area together. After pinning the crotch area together, mark out the sewing allowance of half an inch at the crotch and then go ahead and sew all the way. You want to repeat this for the front crotch as well. After sewing, this is what it looks like and as you can see I did this for the front as well. So right now we have the front and the back crotch sewn together. The next thing to do is to join the sides and to join the sides you want to open up the back piece and then place it on the table making sure the right side is facing up. Go ahead and place the front piece on it so that the right sides of both fabric are facing each other. Then go ahead and pin the sides in place. After pinning the sides together, mark out the sewing allowance of half an inch and then go ahead and sew. You want to repeat this for the other side as well. After sewing the sides, this is what it should look like. So guys, the next thing to do is to hem the bottom as shown. You want to hem from one crotch area to the other crotch area and you want to do this on both sides as shown. If you need to pin, go ahead and pin the hem in place before sewing. I like to pin mine starting from the center and then working my way to the crotch on the left and on the right. After pinning, go ahead and sew and at this point, this is what your pajama shirt should look like. After hemming the shorts, if you decide to add some lace trimmings or some details to the shorts, this is the best time to add it. You just want to carefully pin it into place and then top stitch the lace trimmings or details to the hem as shown. Alright guys, so at this point we are nearly finished and the next thing to do is to sew the crotch together. Go ahead and pin the crotch together making sure the center line of the back crotch and the center line of the front crotch match and then go ahead and pin the crotch in place. After pinning the crotch in place, mark out the sewing allowance of half an inch and then go ahead and sew on half an inch. After sewing the crotch, this is what it looks like. Next, we need to make the elastic casing. To make the elastic casing, fold in half an inch and then one inch as shown and then go ahead and pin in place. You want to do this for the whole waist circumference. After folding the elastic casing all the way, go ahead and sew it into place making sure to leave a gap of about 1 inch or 1.5 inches unsewn. This gap is so that we can have some space to pass the elastic into the elastic casing. After sewing, this is what it looks like and as you can see I left a gap of about 1 inch unsewn and I also went ahead to put in my label at the back so that I can tell the back from the front. Depending on how stretchy your elastic is, 
Go ahead and cut out your elastic so that it's 5 inches to 8 inches smaller than the waist measurements. So for me, I think I cut out my elastic so that my elastic is about 5 or 6 inches smaller than my waist measurement. And then I went ahead to fasten the elastic onto a safety pin. And with the safety pin, I fed the elastic into the elastic casing. Keep pushing the elastic into the casing until it comes out at the other end. You want to make sure that the elastic is not twisted or tangled in the casing. Secure the elastic in place by sewing it close. I sew my elastic close by placing one on top of the other and then sewing a couple of back stitches on it just to keep it tight and secure. Afterwards, go ahead and sew the elastic casing close. After doing that, I decided to go a little further just to give my shorts a little bit of a professional look. And what I just did was that I, um, I ran stitches right through the middle of the elastic band. So basically, you want to stretch out your elastic band while doing this so that you can sew stitches right through the middle. Alright guys, so we've come to the very end of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it was worth your while. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to share and don't forget to leave your comments, suggestions and feedback in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!